doesn't this sounds like Steve Bannon. It sounds like Steve Bannon. He doesn't like Paul Ryan. And the thing that interested me about this is it supposedly happened at the Heritage Foundation. That's a weird place <laughs> to be <laughs> dropping this kind of line. That's, not, a, no, that's not a late night a show. A petri dish at the Heritage Foundation. Right, created. Oh, okay. created. But when we think it. about I'm... all of the, the internal rivalries, the intramural politics in the yeah. Republican Party, Bannon versus Ryan, this is something to keep an eye on as they try to, to get this health care bill through. With the man we should be asking about this is Kurt, because Kurt, you work there. What do you think? Well, I mean, this is vintage Steve Bannon. And you remember, at the end of last year, uh, you know, as the campaign was heading to the closing sides, on the pages of Breitbart, there were, there were story after story about how there was a headline that, that Paul Ryan was in colluding with Hillary Clinton to help her win at the expense of Donald Trump. And, and that story was written by Julia Hahn, who's Steve Bannon's right-hand person in the White House. Mm -hmm. and, and I think Brian is right that this is the most, one of the more consequential relationships to watch. And as Trump's legislative uh, failures continue to rack up, at some point, I fully expect there to be a full tilt turn against Paul Ryan. It, you know, Steve has made it no secret, and Breitbart's made it no secret, that they don't want Paul Ryan in a, as a speaker. When they took down, in their words, John Boehner and Eric Cantor, they had the idea that they would replace those leadership figures with people that were aligned with them. Mm -hmm. and, you know, as Steve has artfully put it, you know, Paul Ryan is part of the very establishment in the Republican Party that Steve wants to destroy. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I, I, listen, I have to say this before I get to you, Tara, uh, that we have asked Steve Bannon to appear on CNN many times on many issues, and he always declines, uh, decline, but we'd be happy to have him on at any time if he wants to respond to this or anything else. So, Tara, Steve Bannon came in uh, to lead the campaign. This was after Paul Manafort mm -hmm. got fired. Um, in the book, Green tells a, of a Donald Trump blowing up, a story about Donald Trump blowing up at Manafort after a negative article came out in the New York Times and said that this about uh, AIDS making TV appearances. He said, you think you've got to go on TV to talk about me, Trump shouted. You treat me like a baby. Am I like a baby to you? I sit there, <laughs> sorry, I sit there like a little baby <laughs> and watch TV, <laughs> watch TV and you talk to me. Am I a effing baby paul i mean it's kind of because all like, that's running through my mind is nobody puts baby in the corner right is that what i'm thinking like thinking? like i'm a clown like yeah, funny yeah, like am funny i funny how? like funny yeah. how like funny haha -ha, right uh, <laughs> i mean but it's well known that aides talk to the president via tv true Right. They want to get their message across. They tend to speak to him on television because they know he's watching. Uh, it's not, I've heard from many aides that Trump does have a salty mouth. Um, and he's used that uh, foul language not just on Paul Manafort, but on Steve Bannon himself. He's undressed him in front of other aides as well. He's done this to his chief of staff pretty regularly, Ryan's Priebus. Trump is, uh, has a very direct way of speaking to his staff and it makes sense that he would be attracted to someone like Steve Bannon because he has the same sort of style as well. Mm. Um, you know, at the end of the day, aides do say they feel like they have to manage Trump in some ways and they do think that the only way to plant an idea in his head is to either say it through the media or to somehow make him think it was his idea, mm. which, <laughs> you know, is uh, very and typical when you're dealing with someone um, who tends to think that they have the best ideas. But yeah. Trump does actually really rely on Steve Bannon. He carries like the torch for his base. He really has the heart of the people that he is supposed to be delivering um, his campaign promises for, and Steve really keeps him on track. And at the end of the day, I think that Steve knows and that Trump knows that they need each other and that mm. Steve actually does need Steve and he could actually turn the entire Breitbart apparatus on Trump and that could be really damaging to him. Yeah. Um, are we surprised though that foul language is used in a, <laughs> it's a gambling in the campaign? Of Blanca. I don't <laughs> does, think so. Does gambling happen in Las Vegas? <laughs> but it's uh, helpful to hear about it. It is it's helpful. helpful to hear behind <laughs> the people write these books all the time. How I mean, this really works. People that the Hillary Clinton campaign book the Clinton people were not happy about that. That's they right. talk about the they talk 